Okay, and welcome back. And this video is for math for business and finance and math application students. And of course, we're going through chapter one, the odd number problems. And we are working on, I believe, 169 now. Um, and remember, uh, you s to find your problem, you can just scroll through the video to get to that problem. Or if you don't understand uh, something, you can also pause and rewind and rewatch. Uh, in order to get to that, you know, the spot you need in the video. Okay. Anyway, so uh, word problem 1-69. Mo has $900 balance in his checkbook. During the week, Mo wrote the following checks. So he has $900 balance in his checkbook. Okay. And he writes the following checks. Well, when I write checks, that means I'm taking money out. Right. So. And if he's writing following checks, that means I'm, you know, it might behoove me to add up those amounts because those amounts I'm going to take away from 900 to give me my final balance. Now, notice I didn't even begin reading the amounts of the checks, but these are the things that I'm thinking about when I'm actively uh, thinking about the questions. Okay. All right. So he has rent for 350. He has a telephone for 44. He has food for 160 and entertaining for 60. Okay. And he made a deposit of 1200. Well, $1200 is money that's going back in. Okay. So, what is Mo's new checkbook balance? Well, if I start out with 900 and I subtract all the total number of the checks, so that's 4, that's 10, 21, 2 is 5, 6. So that's 614 for the checks so I'm going to subtract 614 from that the beginning balance of 900 and that gives me 6 from 9 is 8 286 dollars in the balance and then he's adding back in twelve hundred dollars more six eight four one hundred one thousand four hundred and eighty six is the balance in his account okay That's simple enough. I right, won't go over that one again. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's move on to 1-71. Okay. Oh, boy. This one looks a little bit more complicated. All right. Rich Engel, the bookkeeper for Engel's Real Estate and his manager, are concerned about the company's telephone bills. Last year, the company's average monthly telephone bill was $32. Rich's manager asked him for an average of this year's phone bills. Rich's record shows the following. Okay, so let's see here. January through June, there was $228. And July through December, there was a total of $168. Um, and then in the back of my head, I can add those together and divide by 12 to give me my average for the month. So what is the average of this year's phone bills? Okay, um, that was relatively, you know, I just there we go again with uh, guessing again. All right, uh, you know, actively thinking and generally, um, you, you, if you're actively thinking, you know, you're almost like being able to see into the future and what's being asked. So let's work through this. I have 228 and 168. So let me get a new slide here, uh, since there's a lot of information on another slide. 228 plus 168. 8 and 8 is 16. That's 9. 396. And if I divide by 12, right, 12 goes into 39 three times. That's 36. Brings down my 6. So 33 is my average because that's 36. So $33 is the average per month. Okay, let's go back. Did Rich and his manager have a justifiable concern? Well, if you know the average monthly bill was $32 from the year the last year, okay, the year before, and this year it ends up being we calculate it 33. So the difference is uh, you know a dollar. So we had 33 per month this year and $32 from last year 
So that means the difference was only a dollar. So really, that's not a justifiable concern. You know, a uh, you know a dollar difference could just simply be an increase in the rate uh, the the rate for the uh, you know for the bill, all right, that they're charging. Now, if the difference was say 63 per month, you know, yeah, then that would be a that's a huge jump. Um, and I would be concerned about that. And obviously, if it was lower than 30, than 32, um, you're happy about that because you're saving money. You're not using the phone as much. But then again, uh, from a, an accounting perspective, if my phone bill was less than 32, why am I not using the phone as much? Am I not making sales? Am I this? Am I that? So, you know, um, these are just things that run through through my mind. Okay, but in answer to the question, $33 is the average monthly bill, and the difference is a dollar, so it's not a justifiable concern. Okay, uh, the last problem here is 1 73. While redecorating, Lee Owens went to Carpet World and bought 150 square yards of commercial carpet. The total of the carpet was 6,000, so the total is 6,000. And we know that 150 square yards uh, is what he bought. How much did Lee pay per square yard? So we're going to divide the 150 into the 6,000. Okay, because the total is 6,000 and we're buying 150 square yards. So we want to know the dollar per square, uh, square yard. So 150 can't go into 6, can't go into 60 goes into 600 four times. So four times zero is zero, four times five is 20, four times one is four plus two is six, that's 600. And I bring down the zero, so I end up with $40 per square yard. And that's the answer to that question, okay? All right, so that was a relatively easy one. All right, um, I'm not going to belabor the point here. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor. And I hope you're, you know, getting a feel for how I handle these, uh, do these problems. Notice that I'm having a tendency to skip stuff. Like for example, I went and when I just looked at 150 into 6,000, immediately my mind jumped to 40. I didn't have to do the math. Um, I've just done so many of these problems, and I do math so much. It's you know, it, it's not I'm mathematically inclined. It's just having done the work so much, you just start to see the patterns. You start seeing the things. I mean, even to the point where I took 150 into 600, I knew that was four times. Okay, why? You know, 15 and 15 is 30. Okay, and another 15 gives me 45 and another 15 gives me 60 okay well I have 150 into 600 right those zeros you know really don't matter much in that respect um, so 4 times 15 is 60 and you have the extra zero that's how I came up with 600 I mean I just see these things and I'm uh, doing a little bit more of the math here than I would normally do I mean I said ah you have a look inside of my head I'm trying to hedge back and forth between doing every little detailed step versus, you know, going doing things light years ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to be getting more and more away from doing every little detail because you don't need to spend, uh, you know, uh, the time. I mean, with calculators and things like that, um, you know, you can punch that up, but I always felt calculators, you're never sure of the, the, you know, whether that number is correct. When I'm doing things by hand, you know, I'm internalizing it. And as I internalize it, you know, and I recall it, you know, I don't have as much problem doing math. So anyway, I hope that's a little bit helpful for you. And I'll see you in the next set of videos for, um, I believe it's the summary uh, practice test. Yep, that'll be the next thing that I'll be doing. Okay, have a great day.